Hello and welcome to Talk Tech. I'm Kristen White and here with me today is Ali Arati, CTO and co-founder of Panologic, a desktop virtualization company with technology that eliminates the need for PCs. So Ali, tell me a little more about your product. Oh, I'd love to. Um, Panologic is a way of taking your existing investment in, in virtualization, whether you're using something like VMware's ESX server or Microsoft's Hyper-V technology. It's a way of taking um, your server virtualization investment and using that also to virtualize your desktops as well. The cost of desktops has skyrocketed. It's gone through the roof. If you ask IDC, they'll tell you that the cost of managing a desktop today has gone up to $4,500, whereas wow. people may be buying a PC for $600 but spending right. $4,500 to manage it. This is a way of taking all of your PCs and essentially instead of having PCs all over your, your, your business or your enterprise, you can get rid of those PCs and run them all virtually in your data center um, and then use you know, very simple devices like this. This is our device, the Pano device, okay. in order for people to access their desktops. Okay, great. So tell me more about that. This device is like an extension cord to your virtual machine. It has no CPU in it, no software, no operating system, no drivers. Wow. It's a pure hardware device. So that makes it really unique. A lot of people have come up with solutions that are um, termed thin clients, and this is not a thin client. Thin clients are traditionally, um, they're really just stripped down PCs at the end of the day. There are maybe two or three hundred dollar PCs that are running Windows XP embedded or, you know, or Windows XP or something like that. And then on top of that you have some software which allows you to access your virtual machine or your terminal services environment in the data center. Right. Now the problem with that is that while you've gone through all this effort to move all of your computing into the data center, what you've done is put yet another computer out on the desktop. Okay. And so you're just duplicating things. Yeah. It's, Even it's, OS on both. It's, you've, almost, you've almost defeated the purpose. Right. And so the point of this is to put something out there that you don't have to manage in any way. You literally plug this in and it just works. You never have to manage it. You never have to do a firmware update to it because there's no software on it. You never have to worry about it being infected with a virus or getting hacked into because there's no software on it. Okay, sure. It just works. Okay, okay. So there's no software, but there's no memory or CPU either in, That's the, right. in the box. So Nothing. tell me a little more because the box has to communicate with, with, the, with the Ethernet cable. It has to communicate with the USB ports. So what is in the box? It's, it's pure hardware. It's, it's okay. very similar to um, you know, a keyboard or a mouse or a monitor or... Um, you know, a desktop Ethernet switch. All of those things right. are, you know, are devices that, that can communicate things like graphics and audio and, and can speak networking but don't need any software on it. Think of this like um, a PCI card, right? When you have okay. a PC, there's hardware devices and then there are drivers that make that hardware work. Okay. Well, in our case, this is the hardware and it plugs into the network via the network port, sure. port here in the back. Okay. And then all the drivers for it run in the data center. So since there's no CPU on that, you're no, not actually running an OS on that. It's all from the server. That's and right. The communication happens um, basically over the, over network. the network. So are there any latency or bandwidth issues? No, not really. Um, this was designed to work both in a LAN environment and also in a, in a WAN environment, a wide area okay. network. And so on a LAN environment, you have um, tons of bandwidth. It's switched Ethernet. There's, sure. there's absolutely you know, no bottlenecks. You're talking about okay. um, you know, sub three millisecond latency. Right, of course. Not okay. a problem. Now, on the WAN, we actually have done a lot of work to optimize things, so even in a WAN environment, it works. Okay, so you mentioned there's no security concerns, or no virus concerns, because there's actually no software on that, on that part. But there is software on the server, so are there any issues or any, any concerns with the server? Um, not really. I mean, okay. the, you are there's Windows always, on the server. yeah, there's, I mean, there's always concerns. No matter um, where you're running your desktop, you know, there's always a concern that it's going to get infected with a virus or, or course, malware right. or something like that. Um, and so, you know, for that reason, you, you know, you, you want to use a lot of the best practices that you've always used. But when you have a, a situation like this, you actually have a lot more control over the virtual machine. It's centralized. It's not a desktop somewhere right, where right. you don't really know what people are sure. doing to it. Sure. Um, the other thing is, you know, you have to realize that all the communication that, that goes between this device and the virtual machine, so essentially all the communication that leaves your data center um, is going through our software. And so we give you control over that. You actually have the ability to control what kind of devices a user is allowed to plug in here. The other thing I'd like to talk about also is you know, when, when it comes to security, one thing is once you have um, managed everything, once you put everything in the data center and you're dealing with virtual machines, management of those virtual machines becomes a lot easier. And so just to give you an example, of one thing we have done over here is we have this this panel button. Um, you know, the, the, the device has this, this button on it. It actually has two purposes. One is it lights up uh, in different colors to give the user status. Right. But it's also a button that the user can press to get help. Okay. And so 
A lot of IT oh, okay. guys have this experience. Well, they'll walk up to somebody, and this person will give them this look of despair, like, oh my god, I just want to throw my computer out the window. <laughs> This button allows okay. them to do that. Okay. All they do is they press this button. They say, my computer isn't working. Give me a brand new machine. And we will virtually, in the, in the data center, in the back end, automatically provision them a brand new virtual machine. They log back in. And all of their files and all of their settings are preserved because all of that stuff is stored on a file server somewhere. But their machine is brand new. It has that you know, new car smell. Is there a way for a customer to know kind of what kind of server, based on their usage and based on the number of machines that they want, number of virtual machines they'd like to run, what kind of server um, is required in terms of size of server? And Yeah, absolutely. It turns out that uh, both servers and PCs today are horribly overpowered. So PCs today are like 95% idle, and that's one of the reasons okay. why they're, it's so wasteful to have PCs sure. everywhere. They're right. burning two or 300 watts. This device uses five watts. <laughs> Okay. Now, PCs are overpowered. Well, servers are equally overpowered. You now can you know, call up Dell and for $3,500 get a server that has eight cores and 16 gigabytes of memory. Right. And a server like that is you know, capable of easily running 30 to 40 virtual machines on it and serving out desktops for 30 oh, to 40 okay. years. So can you tell me a little bit more about the history of the company and kind of what sparked the idea for this product? Yeah, well, the company uh, officially started, officially launched about uh, two years ago. It was founded by both me and my co-founder, Niels Bunger. And um, we had actually met about, uh, I guess, six years ago now. Okay. And right when we met around, around that time, you know, we had talked a lot about, about server-based computing and, and all of these models. And we really believed in the model and realized that there was nothing, nothing good on the market. Sure. Everything that was out there was problematic. You had um, thin clients, which are really just stripped down PCs, which right. didn't offer any, a lot, which, which failed to deliver on all of the benefits they promised. Uh, there was terminal services, which was a way of giving someone access to a desktop, but not a real desktop. And so what we did is we, you know, we came up with the perfect um, technology, but we had to wait in order for the market to mature. We, we knew that virtualization had to come of age. We knew that uh, a new type of endpoint had to be created. And when we saw the market converging, that's when we went and built this device specifically for desktop virtualization. We call this a purpose-built client. All right. Well, we've enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you. And um, let's take a look at um, a, a little demo of your technology. Absolutely. Um, what I have here is an example of how you can use two PANA devices. You might have one in your office where you're logged in and you do the majority of your work. And then there might be a second device somewhere else, like in a conference room. And this is an example of how you can just go up to one device, say, in your conference room, log in, simply type in your username and password. And what you'll see is the, device, the, the session will literally move over. And so on the right, it just, you know, the virtual machine just disconnected from there. And it's being brought up over here in the conference room on the left. If a user is having trouble with their virtual machine, one thing that they can do is they can request that a new one be provisioned for them. All they have to do is type in their username and password, and then there's a button over here that they can click called Move to Trash. And this allows them to you know, instantly request a brand new virtual machine and have that provisioned for them.